Hello YouTubers, I'm Saul Sunforge and this is Dungeons and Taverns. Today's topic is world travel. I think in terms of tabletop, world travel is exceptionally fun, it can be exceptionally rewarding, and it can be a great part of the campaign. But first I want to cover why you wouldn't want to do world travel in detail. If you're running a campaign that is mostly city-based, you know, uh, that is a few different cities, and you just want to gloss over everything that happened during the travel, uh, you, you basically you fast travel. You know, kind of like they do in a show like Game of Thrones, where Littlefinger seemingly travels, you know, hundreds of miles within the same episode. So if you're trying to get back to a town or to a dungeon or some location where it's completely known, then fast travel is completely fine. You don't have to give any details of the world travel or just very minor details possibly. In my campaigns, I like to use world travel for quite a few different things. I use it to telegraph the threats that are going to happen based on how, how descriptive I am of the zone and the types of enemies that are lurking around, the amount of enemies that are lurking around. It's a great opportunity for role play as you know the group settles down for a long rest and then a few of them have to take watch together. Uh, you know, there's talking around the campfire and so so on and so forth, sharing a meal. Uh, when all that happens, that's usually a great time for role playing to happen between the characters, as well as the players getting to know each other a bit better and be being more comfortable in the setting that you're in. And that role playing in those campfire situations where the party's taking a long rest, you allow players who traditionally don't get a, a role that is front and center to shine. Not everybody who plays D&D does it for role playing. Not everybody who plays D&D does it expressly for combat. And there's some players who just play just to have fun, but that's really all. They don't really care too much yet to flesh out a whole bunch of things because they might not be comfortable with it. While those campfire situations allows them to start delving a bit into role play at their own pace and you're providing those situations for your players. I like to use world travel as a framing device where the group may not have heard of something yet of a location uh, or even a faction but during world travel is when they run into different locations that they may want to explore later on and they make a note of it as, as they want to and separate players will make separate notes uh, of interest not everybody's going to be interested in everything you present but if the players are traveling along an uh, often used road and they happen to spy, you know, a cottage in, in the woods and, you know, they make it, make it a little bit interesting or, you know, maybe uh, the, the swamp, the swamps, uh, you know, the trees part ways and reveal an old rundown um, castle or something like that. Well, that's going to get most of the parties, you know, that's going to get their attention. And you don't want to use those types of set pieces all the time because then they're no longer set pieces. They're just bland scenery. So you want to give very ample descriptions of everything. You know, the, the beautiful pristine waterfalls, you know, the spray, the, the ocean spray, you know, the, the, the hot sandy beach, the welcoming oasis with life-giving water in the middle of the desert. The, these are set piece moments that you can describe to the party as they're traveling and they may go to these places immediately or they may go to these places later on. But as a smart DM, you pay attention to all of it and this way you can kind of gauge their interest as you describe these things so you know what to plan for later on. Don't fret because some of the things that you make that that party may not go to, you can reuse it or repurpose it for later on campaigns. My ne very next campaign, for instance, that's not taking place in Dungeons & Dragons is going to have nothing but my set piece moments that I made that are all different and things like that, different scenarios and dungeons, and it's all pieced together in a world, and then I just filled out, you know, everything else that, that uh, needed to be taken place, you know, more of everything. World travel isn't just set piece moments and campfires, there's also conflict. And what I do is, depending on how dangerous that zone is, the factors into the chances that the players are going to get into a conflict. Well, no duh, right? 
But the way that I do this is I will roll two opposing D6 or D10, depending on how dangerous the zone is, precludes what dice that I use. And if I, I roll a dice for the encounter, or a possible encounter, and then I roll the party's dice, excuse me, there's going to be a storm. I'm recording this uh, very hastily. At first, I thought it was just fireworks from the uh, local baseball team's uh, stadium. But it definitely sounds like it's time to turn off my computer and everything like that. So let's wrap this up. So where was I? Oh, yeah. So I rolled uh, like a D6, for instance. And, you know, this is the monster or the encounter's D6. And then this is the party's D6. I may give the party bonuses behind the scenes. And th those are numbers that I don't really want to reveal right now. But... So what, what happens is the more dangerous the area is, the lower the monster number has to be. And it doesn't necessarily even need to beat the party's number. And then if, you know, if the party is, you know, they're, it's less than ideal. They're traveling slower because they're hurt and things like that. Maybe it's out in the open. There isn't really too many trees to, you know, uh, you know, secure their location. Um, and, so I roll these to opposing dice, okay? Now, if it's not that bad of an encounter, like a, a area, if the lands are traveling through are actually maybe friendly lands, and perhaps most of the monsters have been dealt with in that area, because in my world, the monsters do move around, and you know they, they do move from their, their own habitats, make new layers, you know, dragons that, that, you know, go from a smaller layer to seeking a larger layer, things like that. And so those things are all moving in and out of different zones. And, you know, time of year plays effect into it and the weather and all that kind of stuff, right? And so if the party's in a friendlier zone, the chances of that encounter being friendly are higher than they are of a monster. It's just that there's going to be an encounter. You know, and then maybe I'll roll the percent dice or something like that for high or low. And uh, certain things will affect the percentages. I know I said I wouldn't talk about it, but I guess I kind of did. Another thing that I would probably advise against is every time the party makes camp, don't automatically give them a uh, encounter, a combat encounter. Because that gets old. Uh, a lot of players honestly expect there to be a combat encounter almost any time you specifically have them make camp. You don't want to have them make camp every single day if it's not that type of adventure. If the adventure is more outside of the cities, then that might make sense. If it's a survival-based campaign, well, you know that makes perfect sense. But during their watches, you want to have them pass a series of different checks you know, to see if they observe any danger. You may be able to just describe sounds and thing you know smells or you know footsteps or crunching of leaves or things like that based on their perception checks and if they fail their perception checks well then you know that's when the the enemy uh, is on them and then you go ahead and give the enemy a surprise round well that's it that's all i got for today so thank you so much for watching i appreciate all of you uh, my video should be coming back to normal now. I'm not sick any further, and my vehicle's uh, being fixed. So the video should be resuming again every three days like they've been for the rest of June. And then for the month of July, I plan on taking an emphasis on my backlogged of old session episodes to get that caught up to where the current session episodes are. And then I'm going to arrange it in the playlist so it's in chronological order. So thanks again. I appreciate you all. I'll be back in a few days. I better get out of here before the electricity gets knocked out. Take care.